Recursively defined functions are often easier to create from a real-world problem because they describe how the values of the functions are changing. However, this comes with a price. It is harder to calculate the image of a single input since you need to know the images of all the previous elements in the domain. Let's take a look at the definition of a recursive function. For a function f from the natural numbers to the natural numbers, a recursive definition consists of an initial condition together with a recurrence relation. The initial condition is the explicitly given value of f of 0. The recurrence relation is the formula for f of n plus 1 in terms of f of n and possibly n itself. So let's go through some examples together so that we can understand exactly what this means. I have an example here, actually. Um, let me scroll down here so we can go through this. Give recursive definitions for the functions described below. F sends from the natural numbers to the natural numbers. Gives a number of snails in your terrarium n years after you built it. Assuming you started with three snails and the number of snails doubles each year. So the first thing we need is the initial condition. Namely, what is f of zero? How many snails do you start off with on day on after n years, after zero years? Well, that would be three. Okay, that's the first part of our um, recursive definition. Let's talk about f of n plus one. So if I want the next element of my function, the next input, then I have to take my previous input and I double it. So it would be 2 times f of n. So for example, if I want to know how many snails I'd have after one year, I would take 3 and I would multiply it by 2. Then I would take that element, um, which is f of 1, which, was, which would be 6. We would have 6 snails after one year. And to get to my next output, I would just plug in um, my, uh, my 6 to get 12, and then I would multi uh, plug in 12 to get um, 24. <laughs> I can't do math in my head for some reason. But the idea is this gives me a recurrence relation, namely that my next output is just two times my previous output. Now, technically, you can create a closed form of this. Namely, that f of n equals 3 times 2 to the n, where you could just plug in n equals whatever you want, and you can immediately find the output. But that is different from a recurrence relation. Recurrence relation just tells you how do you get the next output. And these functions are a lot easier to develop um, with real problems. And again, this course is much more practical, in my opinion, than other courses, including even calculus. All right, so let's do number two. G gives the number of push-ups you do n days after you started your push-up push-ups challenge, assuming you do you could do seven push-ups on day zero, and you could do two more push-ups each day. So in this scenario, my initial condition is seven. I could do seven push-ups after zero days. But then to get my next um, day, the number of push-ups I can do on the next day, I just take the previous day and I add two more. And so I just keep adding two to each output to get to the next output. So I start from seven and then I add two to get to the next output, which is nine, and then I can do 11 push-ups and then I can do 13 push-ups and then I can do 15 and so forth. So this is my recurrence relation. Again, we could develop a closed formula f of n equals 7 plus 2n, I believe would work. Yes. And this would give me exactly how many push-ups I would do after n days. That way I don't have to add 2 over and over again. I could just, if I wanted to figure out how many push-ups I could do after 100 days, it would be 7 plus 2 times 100, which is 207. I could. Um, this is a lot more preferable. But keep in mind, this is so important. Most recurrence relations don't have a closed formula. 
you can't find a closed formula, or at least it's incredibly challenging to do so. And, and so for that reason, closed formulas are not extremely useful in the real world because they're not all that common. And when they are, typically people knows just so much about them already. And so the problems that you face in real life, especially if you're in computer science, you're more likely to find pro, um, recurrence relations for function uh, for functions rather than closed formulas for functions because the problems you're going to be doing are probably challenging to the modern day. And if they're challenging to the modern day, they're probably not closed formulas. Anyways, I hope that makes sense. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.